Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to Randomly Relaxing. Today I wanted to uh, take a look at a auction that is coming up on February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd um, next month. This uh, auction has a few different things, um, different topics, different subjects, different categories really of subjects, but uh, the two main categories are toys and sports cards. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to do the sports cards. This, this catalog you're looking at is a, it's a, you know, it's a virtual catalog that um, actually you can check out uh, yourself if you want. It's at Morphe Auctions if you search for them online. And uh, it has 380 pages, this catalog. So um, I, I began to look at this uh, a little while ago and thought it had a lot of really cool stuff in it, really unique stuff that it would be fun to talk about and uh, show you guys. Um, so I'm mainly interested in the Star Wars collectibles. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I, I don't really have um, many, you know, valuable, or really any valuable Star Wars toys collectibles. I have, like every child <laughs> of, uh, you know, my age or who was a child, and is my age now, um, you know, I, I have some toys uh, from uh, from that time, but they're all, you know, opened and pretty well uh, abused and not really worth anything. Um, I do have some fairly valuable uh, Star Wars cards and like um, Return of the Jedi cards and Empire Strikes Back, but I don't really have any toys and, you know, I doubt that I will ever spend significant money on toys um, like the ones you'll see here, but uh, it's nice to think about it. So let's get to the stuff here. So you'll see on the left here um, these these boxes, the cardboard boxes that you see the you know the uh, outer cases. Um, I've never seen anything like that before, where you have complete cases of these figures. You know that would have gone to Toys R Us or KB Toys or any of the department stores like Kmart and so forth that that uh, sold these back in the 70s and 80s. Um, now maybe things like this are not as rare as I imagine, um, and maybe it's just me not being very familiar with the the hobby. But um, you know, cases of sports cards from the 80s or not, I wouldn't say common, but you know, I see lots of them because I collect sports cards and I see um, listings all the time for those sorts of things. I have many cases of sports cards myself from the '80s. Uh, most of the most of that's from you know, like the late '80s. That's so not very valuable stuff. But um, I've never never seen a case of Star Wars figures. Um, so uh, this find that's described here. It's basically the content for the auction is, um, you know, pretty pretty interesting. I won't get, I won't really read much of it now. What you'll see in this auction is that uh, they have just opened those cases. They they're not selling any um, sealed cases of of figures here, but uh, they are selling like the empty boxes, and then um, you know all of these uh, all of these. Uh, figures inside are for sale from those cases. You'll see that a lot of these um, right up here, if you can see where my cursor is, um, this is the punch out area of the card on this figure that, um, you know, is intact. It hasn't been removed. So these are figures that, um, you know, never saw a store shelf. Um, this one, which does have the punch out removed, you know, has a price tag on it. I can't really see I feel like that's a Toys R Us price tag, um, but uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. Uh, it's not a zoom button here though. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Just going to drag this guy. So it's not going to get much clearer, but there's a price tag. But um, <coughs> these
these ones these ones have no price tags uh, because they're just you know fresh from the case I think which is pretty crazy so all these figures here are from Star Wars so they're 1977 um, figures I think they made Star Wars figures in like 78 79 as well but the first ones of course were out when the movie came out in 1977 if you got uh, Princess Leia over here, you've got Greedo, uh, Chewbacca, R5-D4, and then a Stormtrooper. There were many, many versions of Stormtroopers um, that came out because Stormtroopers, of course, were in, you know, all of the movies, and there's ones from Star Wars, or several, I think, you know, that came out in the Star Wars series of these figures, and there's even more for The Empire Strikes Back, and even more for Return of the Jedi. Um... These ones, um, okay, so it looks like they are actually selling one box. It's not sealed, but it's a lot, um, a collection um, of figures. They're all Yodas, um, and then you get the box as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, huh. There's Boba Fett. And you see um, underneath here, this is sort of the estimated range. And typically, auction houses like this will list a range that's m quite a bit lower than what it's actually likely to go for. So um, I would guess these are, you know, underestimates rather than, you know, reasonable estimates of the actual range they think it will go for. Just have some water here. One thing I, f I found kind of interesting is that uh, none of these, so far at least, are graded. And, you know, if these are ones that are pulled from the cases and ones that don't have even the, you know, the, the little um, rack punch removed, um, you know, they have to be very, very nice condition figures. And, of course, there, you know, there are grading companies, I think maybe just one or two that grade these figures and there's quite a quite a market I believe for graded figures um, you know just like graded video games now are very popular and very very valuable if you get uh, you know high grade unopened games or or toys um, from this era but uh, yeah none of these um, at, at least for several pages are, are graded and I would think that you know, I, I don't really know how much it costs to grade a figure um, and what the, you know, increase in value is, but in sports cards, certainly if we were talking about unopened sports cards, you know, you always are going to want to have that stuff graded or at least authenticated. Um, it's, you know, it's always going to make fiscal sense to do that. You're going to get a lot more value from the grading and authentication than you pay for it. So uh, I'm, I'm a bit bit mystified that none of these are, are, are graded so far. I think we might see some graded ones coming up, but uh, if not, then maybe it's just that the grading is very expensive, or maybe there's just an opportunity here for somebody to buy these, you know, spend the whatever, 50 60 $70 it takes to grade these, and, um, you know, have a item that's worth quite a bit more. This, uh, Luke, Luke Skywalker Star Wars here on the right has uh, no hole punch visible and the estimated price is ten to twenty thousand dollars can you imagine <laughs> twenty that you know it'll probably go for more if that's the range estimated range uh, just crazy that a toy is worth that much but especially because you know sports cards really I don't think have seen that much appreciation um, and I'm talking about unopened sports cards if you think about sports cards packs um, from the you know mid to late 70s there's really nothing that's worth anywhere near what uh, these figures are worth maybe you know whole boxes are easily worth that much um, from that era but uh, not not single packs and I sort of consider these you know single toys to be equivalent to a single pack in terms of 
I don't know, its likelihood of surviving that era, you know, intact. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I gotta tell you, I just, I love the idea of buying these things and just holding them, you know? I mean, that's, uh, I'm a big sports card collector, as you know, if you know some of my other channels. And, uh, I, you know, I really love the idea of buying unopened sports cards from the 70s. I mean, really, from the 60s and 50s, if I could afford them, but uh, those are a bit out of reach. Um, and, uh, you know, just holding on to them as long as you can, because, gosh, there's just so much nostalgia in these things. You know, everybody who grew up in the late 70s or who was, you know, older than, like, two or three, um, you know, remembers these toys, and that's a lot of people. And there's uh, a lot of people who are into Star Wars now because they are doing all these new series on Disney+. Plus. And, you know, a lot of people are fans and kind of can look to these things like maybe a new baseball fan might think about a card of Cy Young or Ty Cobb or Honus Wagner, who they, you know, sort of know only as a legend that uh, did amazing things. So, I don't know, I just love this nostalgia kind of collectible. And, uh, I don't know, maybe someday I'll learn more about them and kind of get more into the, the hobby of collecting them. But uh, anything I, you know, spend significant amounts of money on, I like to have a pretty good understanding of. Um, so I haven't really done that kind of research on these things, but boy, they just look cool. How cool would it be to have like, you know, like a hundred of these things and then just get like a, you know, one, a, a, like a rack from a uh, an old store and uh, put, you know, put all these up in a room, uh, you know, some kind of like man cave type thing or woman cave and, uh, you know, make it look like a an old Toys R Us or something in the Star Wars section. Gosh, that would be cool. I'm sure lots of people have done that. Maybe not with, you know one's this expensive, but I've seen lots of people doing that with video games, um, you know, having nice displays of tons of video games, um, now we're starting to see some of the Return of the Jedi ones, oh, that, uh, power, power droid in the upper left, there I have that one. I haven't been looking to see which ones I've got. Hammerhead, I believe I have. Um, there's just, I guess, another one of those Luke Skywalker Series 1 Star Wars. 10 to 20,000 again. I'm not sure what we've seen here, but uh, I'm just kind of going around. Now we got some of the toys here, that little land speeder on the bottom of the left page. That's really cool. I love the toys. I actually think the toys are even more interesting than the figures, but the figures are pretty pretty cool. Um, then we got a bunch of Empire Strikes Back ones now. Um, Big Fortuna, I have that one. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know what kind of order these are. And th now these are starting to be lots of them, so you get a collection of them, which is kind of cool, you know, like the one on the upper left, lot four has, um, Return of the Jedi, MOC, Leia Poncho, Lando Skiff, Prune Face, and Baby Pops, you get four, and the estimated value is 500 to $1,000, so nice little collection there, get you started. There's uh, Luke on the bottom right there, uh, Luke in a pilot uniform from the Star Wars series ones. Oh, and then uh, Luke in his, uh, up on the upper right there, Luke in his uh, Stormtrooper outfit when they're on the, uh, where were they when they were, you know, disguised as Stormtroopers? I think it was like a ship. 
you know, one of the super cruisers from the Empire. I want to see more toys. I'm really curious to see. I feel like this is like the third time we've seen these two. I don't know why they just keep like showing those over and over. Now we're getting into Return of the Jedi here on the right page. Lots of different Ewoks. Leia in her uh, um, camouflage. Um, speeder uniform. Darth Vader there on the right, three CPU. <laughs> this guy again. <clears throat> I'm trying to wonder if we're seeing repeats, but I don't think so because these lot numbers are going up and up. They just have a lot of these, but I just wonder. Um, you know, Morphe Auctions is not like one of the super well-known auction houses. They do appear to be pretty significant in stature because they have some amazing things in this auction um, on the sports card side. But, um, you know, they're not as big as like Heritage Auctions or some of the others I've heard of. And um, gosh, if they have like this much... Um, repetition you know in these very nice unopened figures maybe there's some deals to be had you know because there's just not enough bidders to go around okay that top now we're getting to the toys now now this is some interesting stuff on the top you've got uh empire strikes back cloud city playset unopened 400 800 dollars very cool on the bottom you've got uh i don't know what that is one of those like sort of uh there's like a guy in it, but it looks like a droid. Huh. Power droid, yeah, Star Wars power droid. But there's like a guy in it. There shouldn't be, I don't think. And then the uh, Wampa, which is the creature in the Empire Strikes Back that uh, tries to eat Luke. Okay, now some interesting stuff here, right? This is where these boxes are. Um, these are just empty boxes. Like they're estimated two hundred to five hundred dollars each, and yeah, none of these have figures in them. Um, so they're just selling empty boxes. Very interesting. Oh, here's some Star Wars cards. Very nice original Star Wars box. Estimated eight eight thousand to fourteen thousand. Interestingly. Um, I, I've seen in the past a week an original Star Wars box in really nice condition that somebody had listed for nine thousand five hundred dollars, which is a pretty decent deal. I mean, they're they're still going, I think, pretty regularly for like over ten thousand. And uh, you know, it didn't sell, and then he was posting that he was open to you know offers. So I was thinking, oh man, I wonder what I could get that for. Now, do I want to spend that kind of money on a box of Star Wars cards? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 it's a sort of thing where, you know, if <laughs> 10 years ago I was willing to spend, you know, $10,000 on a box of cards from before 1980, I'm sure that that box would be worth, you know, two, three, four, five times what it was back then. Everything from that era has gone up. So I, you know, I think about that and think, well, maybe I should uh, sink a, you know, ton of money into uh, these things instead of, I don't know, the stock market or something. <laughs> um, this is a Series 1 box, by the way, um, on the right here. And then on the left here, you'll see all the other series. You've got second series on the top left there, third in the pink, fourth series is green, fifth series is uh, orange in the fifth series is generally I think the least expensive um, and I think that's the one I I just bought one I just bought a Star Wars box for like $1,500 like a month ago 
I think it was the fifth series. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the cheapest Star Wars box you're gonna find. Now we just go back into figures. We got some open figures, and uh, more unopened figures. Well, look at that it's Empire Strikes Back special action figure set. Huh, very interesting. I've never seen that. I like it. It's on sale for a dollar on clearance. When it was uh, back in the store, it looks like, from the sticker on there. Mm. Okay. Alright, this uh, lot 1300 I'm interested in. Loose graded action figure. Is it graded though? I don't see how it's graded. I mean, I guess. Um, it could be out of picture, but yeah, I guess it it is in a case there where they've graded it. I was hoping they would tell us if that was like a send away because I feel like there were a, a few send away figures that were kind of unique. And uh, I think some of them are valuable they're just you know rare when I say send away I mean like you know things that you had to like collect box top like serial box tops for and then mail in them in with some a check for the shipping and then they would send you like a figure special figure back Ewok village I feel like I had that at some point but I don't think I have it now so lots of loose figures here pretty cool Oh, very nice. What is this? What are these? I'm not sure what these figures are. They look like sort of miniatures. Um, remember Micro Machines? I remember they made Star Wars stuff, but that was like way after, you know, the 80s. It was like the early 90s or mid-90s. And then you've got uh, Power of the Force figures on the bottom left here. Those came out um, kind of when the new, when the Star Wars like sequels were... Um, were out and they kind of re-released these you know figures in new packaging for the new generation um, and they were figures that you know related to the old movies not to the sequels the sequels had their own uh, toys and figures which were, were never really valuable and still aren't I don't think there's another Cloud City playset certificate package what is that huh this is, this is cool okay these certificates were sold for a limited time before the actual figures were available to capitalize on the interest in the movie and get people to buy merchandise this certificate package is still sealed and is in great condition it has a small remnant of a price sticker in the upper right corner and what appears to be a non-factory tape on the front right edge as well. There are very, there's very little wear beyond that, and the certificate displays beautifully. That's really cool. I like that. So that was kind of a send away. I guess you it's sort of like a pre-order. <laughs> very cool. I like that. Man, that's pretty sweet. All right, that's some Star Wars comics. I think I have like a reprint of that Star Wars number one on the right, upper right of the left page. Um, wow, and then there's like one Space 1999 toy. What is Lot 1400? Nice lot of Star Wars and Space 1999 items. Okay, so it's like a bunch of random stuff. And there's like a box of uh, of uh, Desert Storm cards in there, which are totally worthless. So weird. Because <laughs> they just had random stuff they had to put into a lot. Well, that's it, folks. That's all the Star Wars stuff. That was 115, 114 pages. Um, and then it gets into baseball cards, and I maybe do a video on this on one of my other channels. Um, if you're interested, please let me know. So that is what we got for today. I hope uh, everybody is doing fantastic, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Please uh, do subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and we'll catch you all later. Bye now.